Hi everyone, I'm Ken, the inventor of the CTKS method. Each day I seek to give you an edge in the market using professional smart money rules and thinking. Based on my more than 30 years experience in financial markets to assist you to become more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. If you want to get the institutional edge, please subscribe and you'll find we have one of the best communities on YouTube. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently up 1.64% to 24802. Ethereum is up 1.65% to 1704. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about rule 130, make volatility your best friend. Legendary traditional investor Warren Buffett says most people get interested in the market when everybody else is. The time to get interested is when no one else is. You can't buy what is popular and do well. Making volatility your best friend and getting in when everybody is getting out requires a system of rules. It also requires knowledge. That's why, as professionals, we have very strong foundations. We understand that we don't have the knowledge, we don't make the money. It's that simple. We must gain context by looking beyond the charts and then come back into the market and find the market's focus. Understanding that opportunities reset every day and enhancing our pattern recognition. It's really important to have the right mindset before you buy or sell. This is the structure of the masterclass and a very good comment from yesterday's video. It was 0.4 positive excellence aim shouldn't be aim it should be breathe and the concept is when you breathe you focus and you center yourself. I think that was an absolutely sensational comment. Thank you my friend. When you make volatility your best friend you're seeking to get in on the right side of the percentage. And as traders, we're actually in and out of positions. In episode 812, I put together a video that explained LV13's chart. And this is all about yield curve inversion. Things do take a lot of time to play out in the economic system. In episode 813, yesterday's episode, I put together a chart for, to help you to predict local highs and lows. We are definitely entering a time when we need to pay attention. But just think about it like this. Institutional investors are always in the market. Always, no matter what the market is doing. And as promised, I've shared my live chart from this particular episode in LV28 of the Masterclass. The way that you make volatility your best friend is by understanding objective dynamic market structure. You need to know where the support and where the resistance are inside the market. One thing that typically happens, investors and traders are not really quite sure where structural resistance and support are. And you can imagine with gold, if gold is coming down to a very strong structural support level, wouldn't you anticipate it to actually do a technical bounce above that and go up to the next smart money sell level? Yes, you would, because the idea is the more support below a particular asset class or security or anything that you look at, anything that you can chart up with the CTKS method, the more positive momentum there will be when price comes down to test that smart money buy level. And that's a really important factor to keep in mind all the time. You would expect that buyers will step in. At the moment, we see sellers trying to push the price of gold down. And there's a lot of reasons for this to happen at the present time. But you can see how smart money buy areas actually react to price momentum. So this is something that you want to keep in your mind all the time. You're going to see with the CTKS method that price actually ping pongs or pinballs rebounds between smart money buy areas and smart money sell areas. And you'll see this all the time. And it's about the closest thing that you will get to certainty inside any financial market. 
The DXY has been referred to as the global wrecking ball. It just tells you something about if the DXY goes up, it's not good for the main markets. It's not good for other currencies. Making volatility your best friend is all about understanding market structure and understanding how a lot of different charts are moving together. If we look at the DXY, the DXY was below several, several smart money sell levels and it managed to actually overcome those. What does this mean for the future of the DXY? Well, it's making its way through some really, really heavy resistance. As it does so, it actually weakens market structure across not only the stock market, but also across crypto. We can see this weakening occurring across the SPY or the Spider S&P 500 ETF trust. As the dollar strengthened, it firmed up. And what happened to the SPY? It struck a smart money buy level and it went up and rebounded ping pong to a smart money sell level. But this is indicating weaker market structure. But the jury is out at the moment. It could go either way. And this is why we have to embrace volatility. Apple Computer is a very, very important main market stock, and we can see it's being currently rejected from this smart money sell level between 156 and 158. With the dollar strengthening, that's adding to the story as well. And we can see Apple does have support from 144 to 148. It's currently 152 and 53 cents. When we look at Meta Platforms, we saw that it absolutely launched between its smart money buy level and its smart money sell level. And it's not been able to make it through just yet because the market overall is actually starting to weaken. It's at very early days and it could turn around, but this is why we must make volatility our best friend. Just remember what Warren said, but you must be smart and very intelligent about what you do. Do not gamble. If you're new to the channel, a very warm welcome. And just understanding that these shaded areas are called Stanfield zones. They're formed through objective dynamic market structure, which means that we actually mark up all of price history action, not just recent price action, which is what 99.9% .9 of other people do. We mark it all up. And we mark it up through the CTKS method. Why do we do that? Because we want to know what smart money knows. We want more certainty and we must know what the market structure actually is. Rule 130 has so many different facets. When we make volatility our best friend, we're looking extensively across the charts. We're seeking to understand is the market strengthening or is the market weakening? We basically ignore mainstream media news because it's always panic based, either for getting in or getting out. There's no middle ground in the mainstream media news. Warren Buffett, when he talks about getting in, he's actually talking about getting on the right side of the percentage. This takes skill and it takes knowledge to do. You basically have to have experience inside the market. And how do you get that? The best way is to start small and scale. Do not go all in and more. Do not gamble. The house will always win. And that won't be your house. The next FOMC meeting is on the 22nd of March. And what we've seen is there's now a 21% probability of a 50 basis point increase. A lot of people were expecting 25 basis points and there's still a 79% probability of that but they were not expecting 50% at all. And one month ago, the percentage probability of a 50 basis point increase was 0%. And one week ago, it was 9.2%. Yesterday, it was 18.1%. You can see that this percentage increase, the increasing probability is occurring. We do need to keep our eye on the fear gauge of the market, which is the VIX. And we can see that the VIX is starting to change its trend. Don't forget that things inside the main market can take literally weeks and weeks and weeks to play out. Personally, I love the crypto market because it takes days and not weeks for things to play out. 
But the one thing that we do see here, the VIX is starting to break its downtrend. And that's important for us to understand. If the VIX starts to spike up, what happens to the main markets? They will come down. What happens if the main markets come down? That reduces sentiment. It creates a fear-based sentiment throughout all markets. And what does that do? It makes investors and traders head for the door. And that includes crypto. But those people, those very same people will be called back when they see a positive bounce. The retail mindset is continually placed on the wrong side of the percentage. That's why I shared Warren Buffett's quote with you. It's really important to understand its application. I also mentioned that Warren Buffett is a traditional investor. And what's a traditional investor? It's somebody that invests in things that they can hold, they can see, the tangibles. Such as when you see Warren Buffett, he's frequently got a can of Coke in his hand. Why? Because he invests in Coca-Cola. He invests in furniture shops. Tangible, tangible, tangible. And he doesn't get the internet. The digital age is not for Warren and it's not for Charlie. And he says it himself. I don't think the internet is going to change how people chew gum because he buys companies that create chewing gum. I look for businesses in which I think I can predict what they're going to look like in 10 to 15 years time. And of course, Warren is very fair with that. Technology is moving at such an incredible pace. AI is a primary example. But Warren has been late to the party many, many times, the technological party. And Warren is not alone in not understanding technology. When the will was invented, yeah, the neighbors weren't too happy. They just wanted things to stay the same. Over the past couple of years, I talked pretty extensively about the history of innovation. There's so many times people just don't want a new innovation. For example, if we were meant to fly, we would have been given wings was a very common statement. People just didn't think flight was possible. I actually wrote an article on Medium about this very thing. We all take flight for granted now, but it was deemed impossible by the greatest scientific minds in history until the Wright brothers actually made the flight on December 17th, 1903. But what did Lord Kelvin say, the president of the Royal Society in London? He said, I can flatly say that heavier than air flying machines are impossible. Thank you, Lord Kelvin. Lord Kelvin was the first British scientist to be elevated to the House of Lords. He was a highly accomplished scientist. Absolute temperatures are stated in units of Kelvin in his honor. He did incredibly important mathematical work. In the mathematical analysis of electricity and the formation of the first and second laws of thermo thermodynamics, he did much to unify the emerging discipline of physics in its modern form. Lord Kelvin was pretty cool. He was regarded as one of the greatest minds of his times, but he said that flying machines are impossible and he was wrong. Lord Haldane was the secretary of the state for war in Great Britain between 1905 and 1912. He said, the aeroplane will never fly. Oopsies. The important thing to understand about Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, they're literally like these great minds in past times. When people defend their known paradigms, their known ways of thinking, their ability to see progress ceases. They just can't see it. Good ideas are rejected and new industries are captured by others. When people say impossible, they're saying that their current paradigm stops them seeing and thinking that it is possible. I've always said that one time that people say, oh, that's not possible. They're just saying that's not possible for me. And what typically is impossible? Something that can't be done easily. I come from a very long line of inventors from both my dad's side and my mum's side with patents being held as far back as 1875. 
A lot of people haven't connected the dots on Elon Musk. Elon Musk got involved with digital payments and is doing SpaceX. What is the connection between the two? He wants to go to Mars. He wants to set up a colony on Mars. He wants to start interstellar space travel and colonization. And what can you do with that? Do you bring across your coins and your banknotes? Of course not. That it's just not going to work. You actually need digital currency, hence his great interest. It's utterly incredible what Elon Musk has accomplished. Of course, new technologies create a lot of volatility, but volatility is our best friend. We love volatility. Now these days, we're not talking about a will, we're talking about digital currency. No digital currency here, unless, of course, it's a central bank digital currency. They're safe. But everything else is risky. That's equivalent to somebody saying, you know, this poison is only good for you if it's backed by the government. But it's the same poison. What are people talking about? But of course, digital currencies are not poison. They're just the evolution of money evolution of money and the evolution of the internet to web 3.0. A lot of people don't understand this fact either. One thing that I wanted to bring your attention to, the $25,000 level on Bitcoin is a retail level. Now, what do I mean by that? The market is divided into smart money and retail. Retail always thinks in terms of zeros. 25,000, 20,000, 22,000, 30,000, 50,000. That's not how institutional minds work. Smart money doesn't work that way. It knows that if something is on the zero, it's going to be a heavily populated spot because there'll be a lot of retail there just piling in on that particular number. Smart money always goes off the zero, either under it or over it, depending on how they're trying to either enter or exit a trade. You can think of financial markets like the sea. The sea is not always going to be calm. In fact, the sea is like literally rarely calm. You always have storms somewhere. A retail investor will not, or trader, will not step foot on the ship of market price action unless the C's, financial price action, are incredibly predictable. Oh no, predictable. And why did I say oh no? Because as soon as retail gains certainty over something, they are definitely incorrect. We've seen it all the time when we look at short and long liquidations. Those people are utterly certain that they are correct until they get smashed and wiped out. That's why I always recommend that you trade at spot, which means that you just trade with money that you have. Start small and scale. Gain the experience, gain the hands-on experience, and make sure that it doesn't cost you too much in terms of trading fees. What you're seeking to do is to actually acquire experience in the market. That's a very, very important thing to do. Have a system and a process for understanding market price momentum and know what you're doing. It's really important to know how the financial jigsaw all fits together. And these particular points, point one, two, three, four, five, this is the structure of the masterclass. This is where I do deep, deep dives. And it's all about transferring knowledge. Rule 130 also has a very personal application. Make volatility your best friend. In life, things can get very, very volatile. It's not just price moving in a wave. Your life moves in a wave. You will have life rallies and you will have life pullbacks. You can think of it just like price. As you're going through life and things are going really well, you will hit eventually a level of resistance. You'll get a diversion, a setback, and you will go into the darkness. This is what happens to all of us. During that time, you're actually accumulating strength for the next promotion, the next setup, the next support level, and you will rally forward further than you did before. Life pullbacks, just like financial pullbacks, come for us all. We all need to deal with sickness, the loss of loved ones, separation from family, relationship breakdowns, trouble at work. 
problems with our friends, conflict, addictions, sadness. In making volatility your best friend by applying rule 130, you're actually creating strength in those pullbacks. You're learning, you're increasing your knowledge. How is that possible? It's possible by focusing on positive excellence, keeping persistent and committed, being determined and confident, having gratitude, happiness, inner and outer peace. And you might say, Ken, how do you have inner and outer peace as you're going through a life pullback or going through a financial pullback as well? The truth is, it's not easy to do. But if you have a focus on it, it's much easier because you're focused on it. Pullbacks are all about gathering strength. They're not about duration. If you can gather strength in, for example, a week, that's better than gathering strength, the same strength in a month, because you're fighting it. And that's why, as a community, we focus on positive excellence. In this particular video, I think we should talk about purpose because purpose is really important. If we're making volatility our best friend and we're going through pullbacks as we experience volatility, not just market financial pullbacks, but also life pullbacks, having a clear concept of purpose is incredibly important for you to stay on those choppy seas. Please let me know in the comments, what do you think purpose is all about? Positive excellence is all about a to be list. They're all just positive habits that create a more positive life. They don't stop pullbacks. Pullbacks will happen to us all no matter what, but you will go through it 10 times more quickly with a much, much better attitude. We know that all results come from the mind and a better mind creates better outcomes. So that's why we have the CTKS Creed for daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success and happiness. If it's the first time you've looked at this, this may seem a little bit weird. But the truth is, inside financial markets, you are going out and sailing on choppy seas every single day. You need to be your own compass, your own guiding star. That's why the words in the CTKS Creed, I know the universe is designed to make me succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. I always solve my problems with positive excellence. When you're going through times, hard times, you want to empower yourself as much as possible. And we all go through hard times. Have a fantastic day or night ahead, my friends. And we look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now.